Kazakhstan has chosen the multi-vector integration. Its trends, collisions and prospects are coming up in the single market program. In today's program, less ice, more fish, new technical regulations, Eurasian Economic Union in search of the seat of reason, the oil moving along the Silk Road, Islamic banking, the financing of the agricultural sector. Hello, my name is Pavel Koktyshev and you're watching Single Market. Today's program is focused on the agro-industrial complex and the market of food products. The ice has shifted. New rules of production and sale of fish products have come into force on the territory of the Eurasian Economic Union. They are spelled out in the technical guideline standards, which all the member countries of the Integration 5 are now obliged to comply with. And the main aim of the technical guidelines is to ensure that the quantity and quality of fish products meet the currently established standards of trade. What do we consumers gain from this? Our correspondent in Moscow, Laura Zusubekova, found out. There will no longer be dangerous fish products on the stalls of the countries of the Eurasian Economic Union. This is ensured by the new technical guidelines that have been introduced on the market of the Union. Why were they introduced? The main aim – to protect the consumers from bad quality products. The new document stipulates tough requirements which must be strictly complied with. And for the producers, the technical guidelines are a real plus. Because in essence it will work accordingly to the one-window principle. Goods produced in any of the five countries can be sold on the entire territory of the Eurasian Economic Union without additional bureaucratic procedures. From the catching net to the market stall. Where the fish was caught, in which locale it grew, does it contain GMO and antibiotics, is it real caviar or imitation? All this information from now on will be provided on the product label. Provision of comprehensive information for consumers is the main aim of the new guidelines. And finally, consumers will no longer have to pay for the ice. This is the leitmotiv of the new technical standards. Frozen fish cannot contain more than 5% of ice coating. Various types of shellfish, depending on whether they are shelled or not, their ice content is also regulated. Shelled shrimp, then there is 7%, non-shelled, 14%. The first number is the mass of the product itself, and the second is the share of icing. Therefore, the consumer will see what they are paying for, because before, since there was no unified regulatory framework, producers could have a 20% share of ice on their products. And here the net mass is what counts. By the way, now stores do not have the right to change the product labels or repackage fish products. Fish that was defrosted will no longer be sold as fresh fish. This is strictly prohibited by the new guidelines. Therefore, the ice has literally shifted. Standardized trade rules are now in place on the market. Unified standards also have provisions on safety and marking of food products. The Department of Technical Regulation and Standardization of the Eurasian Economic Commission explained what consumers should pay attention to when purchasing goods. The message to producers, information on the label must be reliable. Zoological names of fish are mandatory. For example, humpback salmon, halibut or silver salmon. Canned fish or semi-products, cooled or frozen, which processing method was used. All this is important to state on the label. Whether it is crab sticks that were frozen and then defrosted, we can't really see that right away. Only by seeing the documentation can we tell. And in order not to have the consumer ask the seller for the documentation, they can now see it on the label whether this product is frozen or defrosted. And this concerns all the products that are sold on the markets of the Union. This is our Eurasian Economic Union trademark, which certifies that all the products meet the requirements of the technical guidelines of the Union. The new guidelines, according to experts, will reduce to the minimum the volume of grey products on the market. Tough requirements will protect consumers from fish products that contain harmful substances such as amoxicillin, bacitricin and growth stimulators. Concerning aquacultures, for fish from seas, rivers, lakes and oceans, the safety requirements are not lower. Fish should come only from places that are permitted by environmental authorities.
Ну, у нас есть требования 022 тех регламента вот о... There is the requirement in the technical guidelines on labeling food products. Easily legible fonts should be used on the label. Therefore, basically this means that a person with regular eyesight should be able to read what is written on the label without any additional aids. Дополнительных каких-то средств, да, он должен спокойно прочитать эту маркировку. However, those products that are not yet ready to work in accordance with the new standards can still follow the old guidelines. All the changes on the fish market will happen within the next two years. This is the length of the transition period for the introduction of the new technical standards on the territory of the Eurasian Union. Laura Jusubekova, Tigran Galstian, exclusively for Single Market, Moscow. Grain is a strategic product on the world market. Food security and export potential of the agricultural sector depend on it. Therefore, if rationally produced, there is no such thing as too much grain. By the way, this entails a number of factors – level of development of production, quality of products and efficiency of management. Our analyst Alexander Galiev brings us the report on the 2017 farming season on the territory of the Eurasian Economic Union and export prospects that are outlined for the current marketing year. The grain marketing year, which commenced on July 1st of 2017 and will last until June 30th of 2018, is promising an ambiguous situation for this market of the countries of the Eurasian Economic Union. Depending on the results of the season, some will be able to expand their export potential, others, on the contrary, will see it decline. But one thing at a time. Russia. Russia. The grain harvest, according to the collection results, was 127 million tons. This is 6 million tons more than in 2016 and the highest harvest level in the last 100 years. If we take into consideration that domestic consumption of grain in Russia reaches 78 million tons, then the volume potential of export is also at record levels. The traditional markets for export of grain from Russia are Egypt, Turkey, Azerbaijan and Iran. But at the same time, high harvest entails high export volumes through the expansion of the geography of Exports. Belarus. The grain harvest in 2017 exceeded 9 million tons. For Belarus, this is also a sort of a record. This volume of grain was collected for the last time in 20 years in 2014. Specialists in Belarus consider that this level of harvest was achieved thanks to the focus on technologies and now about the expert potential of the country's grain sector. There are some nuances. Considering the correlation between harvest volumes and consumption volumes, it is more advantageous for Belarus to keep the raw products on the domestic market, process them and sell on foreign markets as products with added value. For example, in 2016, the country exported 226,000 tons of flour in the total amount of 4 million US dollars. The geography of exports encompasses 15 countries. Next is Kazakhstan, the biggest grain producer of Central Asia. The total grain harvest collected in the 2017 season is 20 million tons. As a comparison, in 2016, 21.5 million tons were collected. And even though the country has seen a slight decline in the harvest volumes, in quality it has seen an improvement. Thanks to dry weather, the grain has a high content level of fibrin. Almost half of the harvested volume, 47%, has a 25% content of fibrin. And instead of a summary, in the marketing season of 2017-2018, according to the market experts, Kazakhstan's grain exports can expect some negative trends. This is connected with the fact that Russia, due to its record harvest collection levels, is expanding the geography of its exports. The country included the countries of Central Asia into its prospective export markets, which were the usual export markets of Kazakhstan. At the same time, Russia is offering a lower price for grain thanks to the availability of subsidies on exports. Therefore, this year will be quite difficult for Kazakhstan's grain exporters. That's all for me. My name is Alexander Galiev. Until next time on Single Market. На этом у меня все. С вами был Александр Галиев. До встречи в программе Single Market. In the spring of 2015, a container train arrived in China's province of Shanxi. It delivered food products from Kazakhstan. And vegetable oil was the main product item of the container cargo shipment. This seemingly uninteresting event has a curious continuation. Our correspondent Yerke Bulanbek Muhammad brings us the details.
In 2015, this continued train delivered more than 2,000 tons of sunflower and rapeseed oil from the north and eastern regions of Kazakhstan. The oil was intended for the company IGU, which has its own enterprise on the territory of the dry port Xi'an. <laughs> We are delivered unfiltered oil as raw material, and at our plant we purify the soil, process it to make it a final product, and then prepare it for sale. For bottles we use glass and plastic containers. One year later, in the spring of 2016, this company commenced the construction of a highly modern plant for the processing of oil cultures in Kazakhstan. The Ilichevka town of North Kazakhstan region was chosen as the location for the new enterprise, taking into account the location of cropland areas and the potential of the region. The project was realized within the framework of synchronization of China's global initiative One Belt, One Road and Kazakhstan's national program Nurla Zhou. We invested 20 million US dollars in the first phase of the construction of the enterprise. The plant was built in a record short period of time, just half a year. The realization of the project commenced in May of 2016, and already in December we had the first batch of goods ready for sale. In terms of available equipment, the plant in Kazakhstan meets all the high standards that are taken on by China's best enterprises operating in the sector. High technology production lines can process up to 300,000 tons of raw materials annually. The volume of produced final products is 120,000 tons. The plant produces unrefined oil, all of which is exported to China to the plant of the company IGU, which is located on the territory of the dry port Xi'an. Here it is refined and shipped for further processing. We ship unrefined oil in barrels by train. Each wagon contains up to 50 tons. One shipment can use from 10 to 20 wagons. In terms of the final product, this is from 500 up to 1,000 tons. The main advantage of this project is guaranteed sale on the export market. All the conditions are in place for the successful realization of Kazakhstan's products in China. Vegetable oil holds a special place in the traditional cuisine of China and this guarantees stable demand. Another factor that is just as important is that the company IGU has a well-developed infrastructure of its own sales points. In China it has more than 1,000 stores. And finally, the competitiveness of the products. Vegetable oil produced in Kazakhstan is of high quality. We believe that Kazakhstan is almost the only country which produces environmentally clean vegetable raw materials. At the same time, they are of high quality. For example, the fat content of China's oil seeds is around 42 percent, and of Kazakhstan's, 48 to 50 percent. The welfare of China's population in the recent years has been improving considerably. And at the same time, the demand for organic products also rose. Kazakhstan's producers have the opportunity to occupy this niche on the market, especially considering that the country already has agricultural enterprises that are successfully exporting their products under their brand Organics. When we found out that oil from Kazakhstan appeared on the market in China, we decided to test its quality. We prepared a dish and realized that it is simply the best. China's investors intend to expand their production. In the prospective future, they want to increase their investments up to 100 million US dollars and as a result raise their production volumes in order to expand their presence on export markets. In addition, they are planning to invest in other spheres of Kazakhstan's agricultural sector, into the processing of grain, production of dairy and meat products, as well as honey.
Yerki Bulanbek Muhanbet, Anatoly Valuyski, exclusively for single market. In 2009, Kazakhstan became the first post-Soviet country which introduced Islamic financing. And today's share in the country's banking sector is gradually growing. Experts are forecasting that by 2025 it will reach 10 percent. The list of economic sectors which are seeing an active rise in investment based on Islamic banking includes the agro-industrial complex of the Republic. By the way, Kazakhstan's contribution to the development and promotion of Islamic financing on the regional and international levels was noted in 2014. At the 10th World Islamic Economic Forum, which was held in Dubai, the president of the country, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, was presented with the GIFA Award, the Global Islamic Finance Award. Islamic finance has a number of unique features which distinguish it from mainstream banking. Here the funds are provided to the client on conditions of cooperation. For example, the share of reimbursement to the bank is calculated not with the use of an interest rate, but as a share of the project's profits. In addition, the bank splits the risk with the client. And this makes it a real partner. So, for example, if a client comes to us with a business project, the bank gives the client the money for the project. But in case that the project unfortunately is not successful, then the client and the bank split the losses 50-50. Islamic banking is developing quite rapidly. Its annual turnover in the last 10 years has tripled and exceeds 2 trillion US dollars. The list of countries that are actively implementing Islamic financing includes Kazakhstan. For Kazakhstan's agro-industrial complex, the start of using the instruments of Islamic banking was marked by the agreement signed between the Islamic Development Bank and the Agriculture Support Fund. Thanks to this agreement, the country's farmers got an additional source of microfinancing through their program Murabaha. This program was implemented from 2012 to 2015. Today, the country is ready not just to expand the range of instruments of Islamic banking, but also use them comprehensively using new models of financing and technologies for the creation of an information database. For example, in Turkey, great attention is devoted to the digital format, which is being used in business operations with farmers. Here there is a unified database which contains all the necessary information about all the farmers. The system just automatically uh, calculate, make a calculation, the product basis and plant basis, how much money they earn, gross revenue and expense, deduct the expense and coming back to net revenue. So uh, in, from this perspective, we don't need any information, we don't need any documents from our clients. As a result, during the process of giving out a loan, the decision is made literally in just minutes, and the farmer can already start using the provided funds within a week. Another service which Islamic banking is offering in Turkey today is consulting and education of farmers. For example, for the introduction of new technologies in land cultivation and starting one's own business. Honestly, we have the uh, SME TV, Internet Access Television Channel, and it works with your on demands. And third one is the for Relationship Manager Training Program. Experts are confident that this format of working with agricultural producers can also be used by Kazakhstan's institutions, which are responsible for the development and financing of the agro-industrial sector. In any case, this process has already started. In September of 2017, within the framework of a seminar that was organized by the Association of Development of Islamic Microfinancing, the Turkish Economic Bank and Agrarian Credit Corporation signed an agreement. This means that a new page is being turned in the history of Kazakhstan's cooperation with Islamic financing institutions. Natalia Ramanyanko, Janata Berkhmanov, exclusively for single markets. That's all for today. My name is Pavel Koktashev. Kind reminder, all the episodes of our program are available on www.kazakh-tv.kz. Until next time on Single Markets.